So now that you had uh, some time to work with this paragraph um, and sort of revise it the best you can, um, I want to show you the way that I have uh, suggested to the author um, to revise um, her work. And um, I'm always very careful, just as a caveat, when I work with writers. Um, I do make some, I might sometimes make some track changes in texts, but I do really like to always explain why I'm changing certain things and when I really change a sentence structure around to make sure it still captures the writer's original meaning. Because it's really hard, you might have noticed this, how hard it is to work with somebody else's writing where you're not very familiar with the topic, you're not necessarily know the nuances of some of the aspects the writer is writing about. It's a little easier to know that when you're with you, when you're doing, when you're working with your own material. So if you found this very difficult, that's okay. It's it's challenging, especially only one paragraph. If you look at the whole protocol, it gets a little easier. So enough said. Let me show you um, uh, what I have done. And I on the top here, um, I put the original, and on the bottom I put uh, the revised version and highlighted the um, things that I've changed. So. I felt that, and so let me walk you through it sentence by sentence. In the first sentence, I felt that actually the um, first sentence was a pretty good topic sentence. Viral suppression is one of the WHO goals in the treatment um, of HIV patients on ART. And um, the one suggestion that I made was is to write out World Health Organization, because that was not used pre uh, prior to this paragraph. ART has been already established as an acronym, but if it hasn't, I would make the same suggestion here um, that it's antiretroviral therapies. Um, not everybody might know that, even if though it's written for probably an audience of other scientists. Uh, it's always good practice to write out acronyms first, put the acronym in parentheses, like here, World Health Organization, parentheses WHO, and then for the rest of your paper, your text, you can use the acronym. Um, so in the original, I'm going to go up here, different care models are being adopted to increase the level of adherence and make ARV accessible. And ARV was another one that was explained previously. And um, and I thought to myself, first of all, it's a it's passive or being adopted. I'm like, who's adopting it? So I um, I switched it around. You see, I changed it around quite dramatically uh, at the beginning. In recent years, I also felt that there's probably sort of a gap here, right? So it's um, one of the world's health uh, goals in the treatment. And in recent years, this has been happening. So in recent years, my healthcare facilities have started to adopt different care to increase the level of adherence and make ARV accessible. Um, so just a little change. We're making it more active, focusing on healthcare facilities as the agent, as the actors. And adding a transition here, right, in recent years makes a lot of uh, makes a lot of difference. The next sentence number, um, I'll just look at number three here. I've left the way it was. Several countries in Africa have experimented, and I just put the proper um, proposition there with few models of ARV distribution in the community. And um, if you look at the original, um, let's find it here. So several countries in Africa have experimented with few models of this in the community. Community-based interventions have shown significant improvement of retention and adherence. Right here, this is where I am. And I thought, uh, okay, so does this refer to the sentence before in a sense that these are community-based interventions, which is the way I understood it. So I added, if you look at the bottom part here, I added such community-based interventions. Just one little, ver one little word, but it makes a much stronger connection between this sentence here and this sentence right here. Because such community-based interventions are the ones that the previous sentence just introduced. Without the such, that connection isn't there. You can probably figure it out as the reader, but your job as a writer is to make your reader do as little thinking as possible. They, you know, you want to just get this sort of flow in the reading, and I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure you've experienced this in either research writing or writing in general that's really well organized. It just flows well, right? And the flowing well comes from good transitions, um, organized sentences, and clear markers for your reader to know where they're at. So such community-based interventions, it was my addition here. In the next sentence, um, if you look at the original here, there is evidence that clinically stable patients receiving ARVs in the community and so on. And I'm like, well, 
it felt to me like this is a really important point. Like this is what's going on. By the way, there actually is evidence. So I added indeed. And rather than saying there is evidence that, which is kind of an empty expression, there is. What's there? Right? There where? We use it a lot in informal English and in spoken English, but in writing, I would always suggest trying to take any version of there is, there are out for a stronger, more action-oriented expression. In this case, I replaced it with indeed, comma, evidence exists that clinically stable patients receiving ARDs in the community have similar violence. Okay? And then here, um, and I added, um, this is the original, and it continues different studies emphasize. I'm like, well, so now the writer is moving on to, hey, by the way, there are even more studies. Or even diff other studies also find this. So I added a furthermore, different studies emphasize that the ARVR distribution models. And so um, it just said here that the models, part of me is like, you know what, I guess it means ARV distribution models, right? Because that's what's been written about before. But I really don't know for sure. So again, don't keep your video guessing, be clear about it. So two additions in this last sentence, a transition expression. To emphasize, hey, here's another um, addition, another additional thought, another piece of evidence to, you know, continue my argument. Difference is emphasize that the ARD distribution models used must be flexible, taking into account, blah, blah, blah. So not too many changes. And yes, there could be probably some other changes. Um, I had one um, colleague of mine, uh, when I gave this workshop at this example, had said something about, uh, where was this? I think it's about several countries in Africa. That's a very general term. I'm like, well, Africa is a big continent. This is in northern Western Africa. So you could probably be a little bit more specific there or maybe even add um, in a footnote which countries. Um, I think um, to kind of defend the writer of this in the previous paragraphs, they've explained um, which countries, because the research protocol focused on several countries on the African continent. And so it didn't feel like it was such an such an omission that that's an area I thought it was interesting that I didn't catch the first time when I was revising this and I'm sure you guys caught a lot more other uh, many other things but the main point the main um, main a main thing for this paragraph is it's it's fairly well structured the sentences aren't too long they're actually really clear mostly but they really benefit from a little bit more what I call pruning um, so if you imagine yourself working in the garden and looking at a beautiful you know beautiful flowers and there's some dead flowers in between. They're, they're still beautiful even though there's dead leaves or dead flowers in between. But by pruning these dead flowers and leaves out, the bunch of you know these bunch of flowers are gonna even be you know even prettier than they were before. So it doesn't mean that they that the you know leaves and the dead flowers and the leaves can't gonna hinder the beauty of the flowers. They're just gonna um, by taking those away, by pruning those out and in a sense in this to say this analogy in this in the case of this paragraph to prune out some of the elements where it's a little bit unclear and adding some clarity and some good transition it really makes the paragraph just a little bit easier to digest a little less distracting for the reader and that's always a good thing okay so I'm um, happy writing and happy uh, work with the rest of your day and I will you will encounter me in a few videos or in a few days in some videos again <laughs>